This is my foster home, where a lot of my suicide attempts happen. This is the carpool where I tried to commit suicide and obviously I'm still standing today. Yeah. My best memory here is when we used to have um, war games with our neighbourhood kids and we will always win because we had the grapefruits while on the other side there's the fijos. And but you know it was a lot of fun. My mum had a um, a really loud Honda prelude, a red one. And literally we could hear it from up the road before it comes into our driveway. And that day I didn't hear anything and I guess it's because all I was thinking walking home was um, today I'm going, I don't care anymore, you know, I hate life, I don't know why I was given life, I'm, I'm just going to go. Um, I checked everywhere in the house, no one was at home, so I thought yes today is going to succeed. But um, just when I was getting everything prepared, she barges in my door and she hugs me and it's a hug I'll never forget. It was a hug to say that I'm here and you always say, oh you know, you're my girl and just constantly speaking to me, just feeding life into me but on that day all I wanted was to just to be gone. I just didn't want anyone else to worry about me. I just didn't know it was an issue. You know, I just thought it was normal. You know, that sexual abuse at a young age, I thought that was normal. Being abused in your own home, physically, I thought that was normal. And that I'm the dumb one that didn't know how to deal with it. And so it's, that's why I just never really thought it was, it was something that I needed to get help for. And, you know, I just didn't know how to do connection and I didn't have trust, major trust issues. Um, I just didn't know how to describe what was happening inside. <laughs> but I'm just so grateful that um, for everything that she had taught me I feel so grateful that I had someone to unpack my hurt and actually put a word to it yeah. I feel blessed <laughs>